As I asked one of my student, that why are you late? He said, traffic, sir. I said, well, but it's an online class. He said, that's true, sir. Network traffic. Hi, I am Dr. Bankim Jani, and I take you on a journey to wireless technology. This is divided into two parts. In this film, we'll be understanding about the concepts. We'll be building strong concepts. And in the next film, we'll be implementing them. So here we start. Wave is a kind of oscillation and it travels through space and matter. So basically wave motions, they transfer energy from one place to another. Now there is crest which is the highest point and the trough which is the lowest point. Now wave is comprised of so many things. The entire length of the wave that is from one point where it goes to the maximum comes to baseline goes to the deepest level and then back to normal this entire thing is called as the wavelength and it is represented by lambda such number of waves passing per second through a point is called as the frequency so frequency means how many waves they are going in one second and this was given by Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. He was a German physicist. So one cycle per second is also called as one Hertz. That's the unit of frequency. Then it goes in multiples. So this is 10 raised to 3. It's called as 1 kilohertz. Then same way it comes like 1 megahertz then 1 gigahertz then 1 terahertz then this is 1 petahertz then comes is 1 exahertz 1 zota hertz and finally 1 yota hertz so these are the units now as we know that frequency is number of cycles per second how many waves they are passing in one second so higher the number of waves that means it will be using its energy faster so it will be traveling the distance lesser so same way if it is going like this and something which is going like this so obviously over here frequency is more so it will be traveling to a shorter distance and because over here frequency is less so number of waves passing through one point in one second they are less so they will be traveling to a longer distance. So wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency. So when we multiply wavelength with frequency, it gives us a constant value and that is what is called as the speed of light C or the speed of light, it's a constant. Right? Speed of light which is like say 1,86,000 miles per second or it is 3 lakh kilometers per second so just for the example say if the frequency is 2.4 gigahertz this 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz these are very important frequencies especially in the field of let's say wireless we'll, we'll talk about it very soon but here it is that this is 2.4 gigahertz its wavelength is 12 centimeter so that's the size of the wave and when it comes to 5 gigahertz it is 5.5 centimeter so it is smaller now here is one more important concept and that is what is called as the amplitude the highest distance from here and this is the 
highest distance from the baseline to trough that is what is called as the amplitude now over here if you see frequency would remain same but it is the amplitude which matters so what amplitude really means i'll give you a very simple example if i say hello and now i'm telling hello so in this when i am increasing my volume so it is like i am increasing the amplitude so that's the whole meaning of amplitude amplitude is like power right how much energy decrease the amplitude that is decrease in the energy now when it occurs when these waves they are passing through some obstacle let's say this is a wall so when it will be passing through this wall there would be decrease in the amplitude this is exactly what happens then when our access points they are into another room so we get a very good signal in that room but when we move to another room that strength decreases this is because of amplitude because now the amplitude is lower so there is decreased energy now this energy is measured in watt that's the unit of energy 1 watt is 1000 milliwatt now this is necessary to understand because say our radio stations they are of 50000 watts our microwave it is 1000 watts but when it comes to our access point it is very very low energy it is just 1 to 100 milliwatt now because this microwave is also emitting the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz now this signal is much stronger microwave signal is much stronger so this signal is sufficient to disturb the signals of our access point and that is what is called as the noise similarly is the case with say our cordless phones cordless phones they are also on 2.4 gig and they can also affect our access point now we talk about a very important principle the decibel scale this was given by bell labs now as such it looks bit complicated but truly speaking it is so easy just we have to remember some some basic principles now see this is a reference point now from reference point when the signal strength is decreased to half so this is power when this strength or the power decreases to half it is called as minus 3 db when it becomes double so it will be called as plus 3 db here it is so this is 0 db no difference plus 3 db that means it is twice minus 3 db means it is half when we are talking about plus 10 db that means it is 10 times the reference and when it is minus 10 db it means it is 1/10th now let's put it on graph so this is our reference point 0 db and the power is 1 when the power is doubled so this is where it would be doubled and this is the power where it would be 10 times okay and we know that when the power is double it would be plus 3 db so here it is this is 3 so this is the point which we take this is where it is plus 3 db and power is double when power is 10 times so at that point it is 10 db so we just take this point over here let's go on the decreasing side when power becomes half so it is minus 3 db so over here and power when becomes 1/10th so it would be minus 10 db so that would be something over here now when we draw a graph right it would be something like this this is the logarithmic graph and this is very useful especially when we'll be comparing various antennas not now but this is important for the 
understanding and it will be very useful for your future understandings okay let's take one simple example if the reference is 1 milliwatt so then it would be called as 0 db when it becomes 2 watt so it will be double so it would be 3 db and when it becomes 10 watt so that means we are talking about 10 db fair enough okay tell me this pause the video and give these answers 10 milliwatt it is our reference so it is at 0 db so what would be the decibel value when it is 20 watt what would be the value when it will be 20 watt one more question what would be the value in milliwatt when we are talking about minus 10 db quite easy i hope you have written the answers or you know the answers 20 milliwatt yes it is double so it has to be plus 3 db and when we are going from 0 db to minus 10 db that means we are talking about one tenth strength so 10 upon 10 that means we are talking about 1 milliwatt so that's the relation between power and the decibel now see there are several types of antennas so many antennas you must have seen these antennas around you right so many different types of antenna even in your access point there are different types of antenna so when we compare the strength of these antennas that's where the db comes into picture we now talk about electromagnetic spectrum this is electromagnetic spectrum putting in simple words see there are so many types of waves so many different types with various frequencies there are visible waves visible waves means it is the light which we can see there is infrared microwave radio tv and on the opposite side we have got x-rays gamma rays ultraviolet etc we are interested in this section that is the microwave section because all the wi-fi all the wi-fi communication they will be occurring in this only so we have got 60 uh, gigahertz 5 gigahertz 3.5 gigahertz 2.54 gigahertz 600 megahertz 900 megahertz these are the various frequencies which are in use now what's called as the ism band industrial scientific and medical now this is a band in which we can go for the communication license free but not regulation free right so there is a governing body who is controlling all these things wi-fi alliance cordless use 2.4 gigahertz now even our wi-fi also is using 2.4 gigahertz that microwave was creating noise on 2.4 gigahertz so all these factors they do affect the strength and the quality of the signal of access point bluetooth is like working on 1 megahertz there is Zigbee which works on 5 megahertz. Zigbee is interesting. This is like open global standard for wireless technology. This is something which is used quite often for smart homes. As such, this is a very low power digital radio. But it is for short distance because it is low power. So obviously it will be for short distance 10 to 20 meters just 250 kbps speed that's the reason it can be used very effectively for smart homes that is when we want to really control our switches or any of the gadgets so for that purpose for smart homes this is very useful now we go specific say this is 2.4 gigahertz now this 2.4 gigahertz it was never designed for wi-fi first reason that there are channels but all of them they are overlapping channels they are overlapping over one other right? so actually we can extract out only three channels that is this channel one we have got the channel six and then there is 
channel 11 so it is this 1 6 and 11 they can be used effectively because they are not overlapping each other rest are overlapping each other so that's the reason for 2.4 gigahertz there is very limited scope so we have overlapping channels and again they are of variable size right right now we might not be going into much detail of this but just for a very uh, basic understanding that this channel size channel width that is of channel width of channel 6 is 22 megahertz while that of channel 11 it is 20 megahertz but well still this is in use and it is used widely this is the future and in fact most of the technology now it is relying on this 5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz it is divided into several uni bands that is uni 1 uni 2 uni 2 extended uni 3 uni is unlicensed national information infrastructure now these areas where you see where you see this red color they are for radars they are for radars so practically uni 2 and uni 2 e they are given to those radars radars which are used by weather department by military by government organization but it's like these radars are not everywhere so what if, if in your area there is no radar who is using this uni 2 or uni 2 e so in that case can you use it yes you can you can use it but subject to you should be having a device supporting DFS DFS is dynamic frequency selection what dynamic frequency selection does it tries to detect that is there any device who is utilizing uni2 or uni2e if not so then it can use that frequency so this is like it's much better because there would be less traffic not everyone would be dfs supporting so that's why you'll be getting much better signals so this is something like this dfs certified okay coming to the principles of networking when we say networking what exactly is networking and we say that networking is like when there are two devices when they are talking to each other right when they are talking to each other why they should talk to each other or why should they communicate to each other so that to share some information or to share resources right to share information or resources that's what is called as the networking Now here is a concept of CSMA CD. What CSMA CD tells that these are the three computers. Let's say this is A, B, C. A tells that yes, I want to talk to C. So he'll send the signal. Here it goes. But at the same time, C says I want to talk to B. And C also starts communicating. So somewhere in the middle, there would be collision. There would be collision. When the collision occurs, A would be silent, C would be silent. And for what duration? For random time duration. So that once again, after that duration, C would try to watch. That is there someone on this wire? No, let me transmit. A would also see, is there someone on the wire? No, I'll transmit. But because this time interval is random, so that's why chances are high that next time they would communicate. They would be able to send signal successfully to their destination. This is what is called as the carrier sense multiple access collision detection. Carrier sense multiple access collision detection okay 
in wireless this is different in wireless it is called as carrier sense multiple access collision and this is avoidance in this say it is one two three three devices they say we want to talk to access point so they will send the signal what's called as the rts rts is that we are ready to send so this is rts rts when it is received by ap access point access point would say okay okay silent stop so we'll say no one would speak and then it would say okay three clear to send cts clear to send okay you speak right and three would start transmitting then after a short time it'll say okay two now you speak so at that point it will say okay you don't speak three right now you don't speak and that's how it goes after that it'll say okay two silent and now you speak so as such if you see at any given point of time access point is talking to just one device right and it goes into dividing the whole time into several fragments and then allocating fragments to these devices this is what is called as the csma ca in this case because at any given point only one device is speaking so there is no chance of any collision this is what is called as the csma ca in any of the communication there is what's called as the full duplex half duplex and simplex when we say simplex simplex means there are two devices who really wants to talk but this entire communication is one way so he is transmitter and he is receiver example radio the point is that there is no way out that reverse communication is possible this is what is called as the simplex then comes the half duplex this is transmitter and it transmits and he is a receiver but when this opposite side wants to talk to this so in this case he will be transmitter and he will be receiver but the biggest thing is this is or right this is like all those walkie talkie so that's why in case of walkie talkie there is always a push to talk button ptt that this is alpha and this is delta so this is this is, this is alpha calling delta alpha calling delta over and then the delta will be pushing their ptt button push to talk and then he'll say this is delta calling alpha delta calling alpha and when they say over that means okay i have spoken from my side now it's your turn you speak and when the entire communication is over they say okay over and out that means this entire conversation is over and we are turning off the communication so that's how it goes in case of full duplex you can be transmitter and receiver at the same time same is the case on the opposite side so there is transmission and receiving the signals say for example our cell phones so you can speak as well as listen at the same time so this is just a basic which would be helpful as we proceed with our topic this is 802.11 this was the most important standard and it is the base of the entire wireless technology it was 1997 when the first standard came in the form of 802.11a it was on 5 gigahertz and the speed was 54 mbps but it was for only business purpose 
very soon just within 2 years the second standard came 802.11b in 1999 this was on 2.4 gigahertz but the speed was 11 mbps and it was for small office home office but it was not compatible with 802.11a these are very old technologies in 2003 that is after a pretty long time there came 802.11g this was on 2.4 gigahertz and with giving the speed 54 mbps and it was backward compatible that's the reason if you see those laptops which were which are say which were made in the year say 2003 2002 3 4 5 right they were having something like this that supporting 802.11b slash g it means it would be supporting b and it would be supporting g because technology 802.11g is backward compatible but i tell you one thing it would be a very bad idea to mix 802.11b and 802.11g when we combine these two devices the entire network would go on the speed of 802.11b which is 11 mbps it will go at 11 mbps reason as we just saw that these are the three devices these are the three devices and this is your access point and they are working on rts cts ready to send clear to send so and everyone is telling you okay i am ready to send ready to send ready to send right all three but what if if one is speaking at a very at the slow pace of 11 mbps these all are ready to send at 54 but access point would say okay, no i need to give justification to everyone so all of you speak at 11 only so the response will go at 11 so entire network will come down to the speed of 11 mbps so some remote corner 1802.11b device is present into network his presence itself would decrease the whole performance right this is 802.11n it was a year 2009 and they focused on features they focused on features that yes there would be increase in speed but there should be more features for improving the performance one was channel aggregation channel aggregation means when you are combining several channels for better throughput this was very important till this point the acknowledgement that means let's say this one frame goes and then comes the confirmation that okay i have received it send me the second frame and once again the device over here source will wait acknowledgement received and then it would continue with the next frame this is what was happening now things have changed now what happens this is what is called as the block acknowledgement it means source would say i am sending one Two, three, four, five, five frames together, and then you send me the acknowledgement, and the acknowledgement would come. Okay, okay, one, two, three, four, five received, and then the next block is sent. This is what is called as block acknowledgement, and this really improves the performance because you don't have to wait for every acknowledgement. What short guard interval is? that when the communication is going right it goes this communication goes in chunks in pieces so in between there is a zone of silence about 800 nanoseconds there is nothing so if we can really utilize even this time for some communication so that would improve the speed by bit this is what is called as the short guard interval and this is the interval which is used for the communication so we are talking about 802.11n 
and it supports 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz both it supports both one another interesting thing it is what is called as the mimo mimo is multiple input multiple output but this is with respect to antenna right so over here this is our access point and this is like our our clients multiple input multiple output it is like two way things so you are talking to someone with multiple output that is what you are sending from the signals that is that the signals which you are sending from our access point and when client is also responding on multiple channels it is called as the multiple input this is the reason there would be several combination because not all the devices would be supporting this mimo technology so it is not that that only the access point is to be mimo it is the client side should also be capable to receive in that format so that's the reason there were several variations that is single input single output right s is single m is double so single input single output single input multiple output multiple input single output and multiple input multiple output right here it should be output yeah multiple input and multiple output so over here even if there are some legacy devices still there would be a benefit because now due to mimo your access point is talking to one but he has got second antenna which will be talking to two and this is third one who is talking to three otherwise if there is only one antenna so then it has to switch over between 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 light like round robin he has to go from point to point to point so that they can communicate over here everyone is communicating at the same time so that's the advantage this is what is called as the mimo now radio circuit plus antenna combining when you combine both the things it is collectively called as the radio chain this radio chain would be sending a signal and that is what is called as the spatial stream these are the technical terms in fact we understood that but this is the spatial stream stream <laughs> so you will see that okay this access point would support 3s this would support 2s and we wonder that what exactly is this ss ss is in simple words it is the spatial stream stream of data which it can send independently so for more than one chain obviously it can send more data and that is called as spatial multiplexing multiplexing means when we mix these signals now this has led to one very interesting thing say in multiple input multiple output our access point is supporting it right and even our device is supporting so it happens like this it would send one signal and at the same time it will send the second also but they will be sent in such a way that one and two they reach at the same time one and two they would be synced right once they are synced so there will be better signal and this thing is what is called as the beam forming it is beam forming this concept is called as the transmit beam forming so in transmit beam forming the signals they are directed towards the user that is the device from the access point instead of spreading it in all direction from client side perspective if you sync 1 and 2 so then this is what is called as the mrc this is from the client side perspective client side perspective here yeah. right so maximum ration combining is the full form of this abbreviated mrc the next one which is coming up is 802.11n in which there are four ss see look we talked about ss ss was spatial streams right so it has got spatial streams means at the same time it can send four signals 
But the best of the laptops, they are having 3SS and they re really need big batteries because the power consumption will increase so much. All those handheld devices, they have got 1SS. But still, not to worry, they will also be benefited. But it's like now your antenna, only one antenna would be used. Now if you are using two, so then you get a better speed. Three, still better. Four, 600 Mbps. But when you talk about 600 Mbps, this means everything is like on its best of the thing you are using 40 megahertz signal you are using that uh, sgi of 400 nanosecond means out of 800 you are using 400 ns nanosecond right that is that guard interval so when you use all those technology so then theoretically you can reach up to say 600 mbps the next one which is called as the Wi-Fi 2 or the 802.11 EC. This works only on 5 gigahertz. It was published in 2013 and at that point it was called as the Wave 1. It was called as the Wave 1. It was using 80 megahertz channel 3SS and there was no multi-user MIMO. There was MIMO but not multi-user MIMO. It was the Wave 2 in 2016 where they used bigger channels 4SS, 4 spatial streams and multi-user MIMO. Multi-user MIMO is like this. So here is the access point and there is one device. This device is not capable of MIMO. So he is just getting one stream. But then there is second device which is supporting so this AP would say that okay, you can support, you really understand this language, fine, I'll send you on two streams. So here it is getting one stream and here it is getting stream number two and stream number three. So that's what is called as the multi-user MIMO. It uses OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiple access. This is beam forming or spatial filtering. That means the signal processing technology so that instead of say the signal going out in all directions it would be directed towards where the client is so this is the directional signal processing transmission as well as receiving and the advantage it gives is it gives you speed and reliability That's 802.11 AX, it's also called as the Wi-Fi 6 using 80 megahertz channel. And again, it would be split for more user services and using those sub carriers. So it uses multi-user MIMO and up to eight spatial streams. Supports five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz both. And devices presented at annual trade show by Consumer Technology Association at Las Vegas, USA, they claimed that all the combined devices they were generating, they were getting the speed of 11 Gbps. No doubt, using the highest level of modulation of 1024 QAM and 800 nanoseconds of this GI. These are some new upcoming protocols. 802.11AY. This is 60 gigahertz millimeter wave spectrum. Peak transfer 20 Gbps. It is for indoor and short range use. Then 802.11BE. It's called as the Wi-Fi 7 EHT. Extremely high throughput. 320 megahertz channel. Now imagine there it was 40 megahertz channel, 80 megahertz channel. Over here we are using 320. This is what is coming up. And it can generate a whooping bandwidth of say 30 Gbps, maybe 2023. Because these things they are not that easy. This is 802.11 AZ. This is called as the NGP, next generation positioning. The whole idea behind it is to identify absolute and relative position of the status. 
stations so you precisely know where exactly your stations are where exactly your client is moving right this is expected in somewhere in march 2021 then we have 82.11 ba this is called as the wur wake up radio the idea behind this technology is that when the signal comes the device should wake up it's not so that device should always be awake and searching for the signal no when the signal comes it will tell the device okay, okay wake up i have arrived and this would lead to better battery life because battery usage would decrease if the battery usage decreases so you'll get the same performance but because of longer battery life things would be much better expected somewhere in august this year only now in wi-fi modes as per its installation one is what is called as the ad hoc mode and second is called as the infrastructure mode in most of the cases at our home we'll be using the infrastructure in infrastructure you have got the access point and via that access point you are accessing your devices ad hoc mode is like peer to peer it's like when you connect with your friend to transfer some photo via bluetooth so that is like peer to peer right now for protection this is IDS, the concept of IDS. IDS is intruder detection system. This is important word, detection. It simply detects. If someone comes, if thief comes, it will just shout. Okay, okay, thief has come, thief has come. That's it. But it won't take any action. So that is what is called as the intruder detection system. As soon as intruder, some stranger, some new one, he enters into your network on your screen, that information flashes that's it it won't take any further action as against ips ips is intruder protection system not only it would detect but it will take some action it will block that port right it will block that ip address so this is intruder protection system ids it is there into wireless lan controllers we'll be talking about more very soon and ips is something you'll need wireless ips wips is needed and that is available in cisco prime cisco prime is like a paid service from cisco for the network management and uh, there is dna digital network architecture via which everything is covered under one umbrella right we'll see that so this is the summary this is the summary a to 2.11 a 1997 then the frequency 5 gigahertz and the bandwidth so this is the bandwidth right then a to 2.11 b 1999 2.4 gig and 11 mbps was the speed or the bandwidth a to 2.11 g 2003 2.4 gig and 54 mbps Right. This was this was for business and this is was for small office home office. It was 2.11 n 2009 supported 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and theoretical bandwidth of 600 Mbps. It was 2.11 AC wave one in 2013 wave two in 2016. The difference is see look at the claimed bandwidth right 1.3 gbps and 6.93 gbps it 2.11 ax 2018 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz supports both and this is the speed which has been claimed 11 gbps now for any network these three points they are vital one is authentication, second is encryption, and third is integrity. In network, we saw that it is the communication between two devices. Two devices, they are talking to each other. When they are talking to each other, it is necessary for them to identify themselves. So this is what is called as the validity of the user. Users should validate himself, yes, I am the same person.
whether he is validating it with username and password, whether he is using biometric login, whether he is using his uh, thumb, anything. But validity of the user is needed. Encryption is whatever the communication which is going on between let's say A and B, this should be understandable by A and B only. No one else should be able to understand this communication at all. So that means on internet when the data is passing we have to really twist it in such a way that it leads to complete junk for anyone else. It is you and the opposite side they are knowing how to decipher that data and after that safe communication can be established. And this is what is called as the encryption technology where you really hide your data. Integrity again it is very important. Integrity means that's okay you are a valid user you have really encrypted your data but whatever reached on the opposite side it is also necessary to know it 100% sure that it has not been modified. That is what is called as the integrity. The data which has reached to the opposite side should not be modified because if it is modified then the, the whole purpose is killed. Right? So these are the three basic pillars and now we will be talking about them in depth. This is encryption. In wireless encryption, say normally when we talk about network encryption, it goes from end to end, end to end. That is, you are on one side and someone on the other side of internet, then we are talking about this entire encryption. Let's say we are talking about VPN or anything else, right? So it is like end to end encryption. But over here, this encryption is from you to the access point. That's it. That's the encryption what we are talking about. In this respect, the first one was WEP, Wired Equivalent Protection. But this was like a big joke, Wired Equivalent Protection. No way it was safe. No. So much so now it is completely obsolete. So you should never ever use WEP. One should never use. Right, because it takes hardly few seconds to break it. Then came WPA and WPA2, Wi-Fi Protected Access, WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access. WPA came in 2003 and it came up with the concept of TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. It is better than WEP but still avoid because there is a better option available and that is WPA2. This WPA2, it came in 2004. Now see, we talked about integrity and encryption, right? Integrity means data should not be changed and encryption means entire data should be hidden in such a way that even if someone taps that data, he should not be getting any piece of information. This is CCMP which is used for integrity and AES which is for encryption. What the CCMP stands for? CCMP is abbreviation of abbreviations. CCMP is this first C is counter mode, this C is CBC, M is MAC and P is protocol. So like counter mode CBC MAC protocol. Now the CBC stands for cipher block chaining and this MAC stands for message authentication code. So entire CCMP is like counter mode cipher block chaining message authentication code protocol. Putting in one word it takes care of your integrity so that it knows very well that we want to know whether the data has changed or not and this is what it does. AES is advanced encryption standard and this is its original name was Dutch pronunciation Rendila. So this was the advanced encryption standard widely accepted T 
PKIP is optional, but one should not use it because it is not safe. Even in our practical also, we'll see that there would be availability of TKI, but we'll not be using it. The next is WA3 personal. This WA3 personal, its capability is SAE, simultaneous authentication of equals. It means that even if you use simple passwords, such passwords which you can really remember, still it won't be possible to hack that. It replaces PSK. PSK stands for pre-shared key. Pre-shared key is something what you configure at your access point and whenever you want to connect the network, you give that PSK, pre-shared key. So that has been replaced by WPA3. It uses natural password selection. So you can select a password which can easily be remembered and still it prevents that offline dictionary attack. Still it is more secure that's what is WPA3 personal not all devices at this point of time are supporting however Apple declared that from iOS 13 they'll be supporting this and Microsoft has already declared that Windows 10 is capable of handling WPA3 now these were WPA2 or WPA3 personal when it comes to enterprise in personal, you must have noticed we talked about encryption. We talked about integrity. Where is authentication? There was no authentication. So at your home, if someone comes and tells that, can I have your uh, Wi-Fi password? And if you give the password, so then he, he can easily connect. If he gives that password to someone else, he can also connect. So as such, no one is checked, validated that whether he is what he is showing over here, is he the same person? No, there is in WPA2 personal or WPA3 personal, there is no validity of the user. Otherwise, encryption and integrity, they both are same in case of enterprise and personal. This is where we enter and we are going for authentication. And for this authentication, it is called as 802.1x. So 802.1x means we are using that technology which is for authentication that is username, password, and it is handled by some special servers, Radius or Takax Plus. It uses GCMP. GCMP is Galois counter mode protocol. So this counter mode protocol is used. Now, this EAP is extensible authentication protocol. So this combination of all these things, extensible authentication protocol. Let's see, this is supplicant who will be supplying username and password. This is AP access point and here is the radius server. Supplicant would say to AP, I want to connect. What AP will do, he'll transfer this request to Radius server. Radius server would check username, authentication, everything and will grant the authentication. As said, there are several steps, but I'm just making it simple. So that there is EAP authentication, extensible authentication protocol. So it said, yes, he is a genuine user. AP, you can talk to him. Right. So finally, what happens is that there is generation of P M K P M K pairwise master key. This is a unicast key and it is dynamically generated and it is not online. It is stored locally. It is not sent anywhere. Both the devices access point and your client, they are having that key with them and they will be using that key for the future communication because it is generated dynamically. That's why any other user, when he would try to connect to this AP, he'll be having another, this uh, pairwise master key. Right? So thus making entire system quite secure. Now Radius uses database, Active Directory or LDAP. But at times, your wireless LAN controller, it would like to act as a mini Radius. 
it means he will take the responsibility in such case it is called as the leap local extensible authentication protocol this is leap when your wireless lan controller is acting as radius server so in cisco wireless infrastructure there is wireless access point if there is one wireless access point right so you configure it individually you create ssid you give security you give all sorts of configuration you give power things are okay one or two or three access points not a big deal but what if if there are hundred or thousands of access points then the trouble and you can't just configure 1000 access points individually it's a huge task the easier solution is wlc wireless lan controller this wireless lan controller will be sending configuration to all those lightweight access points and everything becomes centralized much easier say even the basic models like say 2504 it can handle 25 access points 25 access points and each access point will be serving so many clients say 3504 can handle about 1500 access points the higher models they can handle about 6000 access points right. now in wireless technology it is the ssid which is very important service set and in fire because your network is as such identified by this ssid so here is like wireless lan controller and we have got lightweight access point 1 and lightweight access point 2 they all are connected by switch so actually it happens like that this wireless lan controller would form a sort of tunnel with every lightweight access point and it is what is called as the cap wrap tunnel control and provisioning of wireless access point cap wrap so during our practical many times you will see that we'll check whether the cap wrap tunnel is established or not right so we'll just in any of the this uh, lightweight access point we'll just see whether he has received ip address if he has received ip address that means he is communicating with our dhcp server properly and then we'll check whether the cap wrap tunnel has been established if cap wrap tunnel is established that means he is communicating with our wireless lan controller it means everything is going good these two tunnels one is for management and second is for data now because one access point is supplying so many clients what if if that access point fails so then there has to be a redundancy and similarly what if wireless lan controller fails again it will become a single point of failure so there would be redundancy for that also so you can have multiple uh, access points and multiple lan controllers there are some other services like mobility service engine this is for the exact location similarly there is heat map so once you create that heat map it is to assess the coverage whether the entire network is is con communicating properly and there are no blind spots so that is for heat map and all these things they can be controlled by dna digital network architecture and it's a cloud based controller so in practical when we'll be working on 2504 so it is like a physical device but when it goes to cloud so this is what is called as the cisco miraki wireless system which is a subscription based system and this system eliminates the hardware straight away all you need to do is just get the access point connect to internet and then you have on your dashboard you have got the entire panel for controlling all the access point with all the features it's a subscription based service so that was the conceptual understanding of the wireless technology in the next film we'll be implementing what we learned i would appreciate 
if you turn on your notifications so that you get the information about all the awesome topics coming up in future thanks for watching bye bye